So this is the couple X system. Uh, this is what they call a dome, a couple X dome. It's a 350 high dome, uh, used on mostly H1s and H2s and E-class sites. Um, the next item is a, a 260 high dome, same, same principle, uh, but it's used on AM sites or S sites, um, and very similar with a center hole in the middle. Then the other items that you do have is this adjustment, which is called a beton, and this allows you to, to have adjustment for where your beam is going to be placed because you don't cut any of these domes. The only time you cut anything with the couple X system is when you're going to be doing a, a, a penetration for a pipe or, or pipes. So that's it basically in its entirety. You do have this, these caps which are used to cap off, cap off the sides so the concrete doesn't go in. Uh, and that, that's basically the system in, in total. How it works is that on the, on the domes, you'll see that there's an arrow, which gives you the direction. Now these are designed in the way that the arrows must be facing the same way when they make a group of domes called a cluster. And if you do not get the arrows in the right way, it can cause them to not sit properly. So it is important. But if we we're laying out this corner of a, of a house, basically what you would do is you would have your 300 standard wide beam there and your 300 mil standard wide beam there. You get your, if this is a H1 site, if you get your, your 300 high domes and you lay it out in accordance with the engineer's plans and it will tell you five, six, however many that way and then also how many you would need to go down like that. Then before you fill in the cluster, what they call a cluster, it's best to make sure you get your dimensions right on either side before you fill it because once you fill it, it's very hard to, to push around, which is a good, a good thing. So on the drawings, it will say if it's a 0R or a 4R, 3R, 2R, 1R. What that means is a 0R means basically no ribs, which means you just need a cap. So where you see a 0R, it's just a cap, and you basically put a cap to stop the concrete from going inside. And, and so you would have 0R, say for instance, on this one side. So you put your 0Rs there, and you measure your 300mm wide there, and your trench mesh would fit in that beam. On this side, however, you might have 0Rs. You could have, say for instance, a 2R, because, like I said, you don't cut the domes, you, you adjust, and this is your adjustment to get to the right size, which will be shown on engineer, engineer's drawing. So what happens is, if it was a 2R, one, two ribs, and so now that's your beam there. So basically your beam is your 300mm wide beam, not, not there, but now there. So if that's the case, a 2R, you just gotta put your 2R. If it's a 4R, it would be there, like that. One, two, three, four. 3R, 2R, 1R. Very simple, very, very simple. So you put your 2R there, your trench mesh goes in. That's squared up. Once it's squared up, then you go along with the arrow still facing the one direction and you fill in the blanks like that. Once you, once you finish it all off, you put your caps the whole way around and then you move on to your next cluster. Now, where you have your penetrations, let's say for instance you've got either a bracing wall um, or a, um, a wet area, these are your lower domes, your lower dome sits there and straight away you've got your 90 mil difference between the higher and the low. So this is ideal for bracing walls and for your wet areas for your showers. The beauty is that the arch is the same. So that means that everything's adjustable. Those betons, those caps are all adjustable with these two, which means it gives concrete a versatility and it gives the builder control on site to make the job properly. So if that was the case, go and fill in your wet area like that, with all your arrows facing the one direction, and that's your, that's your wet area. Now sometimes you obviously have pipes. When you have a pipe, you would just cut a hole in where the pipe is with an angle grinder or a hole saw, find out where the cut is, cut it out, and then just slide over the top of the pipe, and then continue on. If, for instance, you get three or four pipes where it's quite congested and it's gonna get the dome quite, le well, quite weak, then what you can do, and this is the beauty of the system, is you can, you can, let's say for instance you have, you have got three or four here, you can pull this one out if it's too hard to cut, 
Okay. And if you've got, say, three here, you could put an adjustment here, like that. There's your pipes. Um, you could put one of those there if you needed to, or just a cap end, like, like this, like that, and that. And now you've got a heap of pipes there without too much hassle. Yes, you will use a bit of concrete, and no, it's not ideal, because the idea is to keep your concrete down, but sometimes, if there's too many pipes, it reduces the strength of the pipe, which you don't want. That's basically it in its entirety. Now, the beauty of the product is this, is that it's stackable. So for a 300 square, uh, sorry, say a 200 square meter house, you would have three standard size pallets of couplex. So what that means is it's a stackable product. So you could fit multiple loads on one truck, whereas with, say for instance, a waffle pod scenario, you don't have that luxury. The other thing is it's, it's a hard plastic, so it's very durable, it's great to stand on, it's very high strength. Um, and this is not, this is gravel or, or, or cracker dust, but it's not really highly compacted. So even in these conditions, it's very, very strong. With the product, it derives its strength by basically a raft. So the setup is the same as a waffle pod. You set it up very similar with a slab on ground, with your same boards, the same prep as a waffle pod slab. The beauty of it is, is this, is that you are getting still the strength of a raft slab or similar to a raft slab by having your next 300 mil wide beam here as opposed to little ribs everywhere. So your strength is high and strong. You've also got concrete that pours here, 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 and here in these. So your point load is very strong, giving you a very high strength product. The other thing is that because of this high strength, it allows the guys to put the mesh straight on top of the domes, which means that there's no chairing, and it also locks the pods in so you don't have to worry about um, breakages on side or anything like that. Um, the, the curvature of the dome gives it strength, so like a bridge, a bridge derives its strength because of the way the concrete's formed, as opposed to you know, just a slab straight. So that means that it's getting strength not only by the actual concrete that you use, but the shape, and also these peering situation to give a high strength result on site. Uh, that's basically the cuplex in its entirety. Uh, there's other benefits like the fact that it's not porous, that it reduces shrinkage, that um, it can stay on site for a month, two months without any erosion or, 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 or brittleness. Uh, it's a recyclable product. It uh, doesn't blow away like other products in the wind. So uh, it, the luxury of that is with a concreter, he can actually set up a cuplex without having to put the mesh on. and rock up the next day and still have all the couple X in the right spot as he left it, which is very hard to do with waffle pods. Um, no waste, so there's no waste, there's no going around like an emu and picking out polystyrene balls. There's very minimal waste. The only time you cut is where you've got your penetrations. Uh, that's basically a quick rundown on the couple X system and how simple this system is. Thanks very much.